We are under two weeks away from really learning everything about DC Comics Absolute Universe. We definitely know it's a thing. We know the creative team is behind that. And there's lots of rumors pinning down who these writers and artists, what the projects they're actually going to be working on. We're going to talk about that today. And I will say this, as somebody that's normally thinking cynical, there's some stuff in here to be really, really excited about. Not surprising. There's some stuff in here not to be excited about. But there, there's definitely some creative pairings and some writers on certain projects that I think really make a ton of sense, even though these aren't going to be like the real versions of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, Flash, Green Lantern. Uh, one of these things doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, so we'll, we'll get to that. Martian Manhunter. Don't know why that's even in there, uh, but we do have lots of information to cover today and hopefully some reasons to get excited. I do anticipate, at least initially, uh, DC Comics Absolute Universe to be a, a jolt of energy to DC Comics because the sales aren't very good. We saw that they're losing market share kind of rapidly right now, and they're just not putting out a lot of books because I believe they're ramping up and waiting for this enormous October thing with all in happening, which will have Absolute Universe on one half of it, and I guess the in continuity stuff on the other half of it. And I do believe with the creators involved here, an absolute universe. Most fans are going to be much, much more excited about that because there's a lot more high profile, successful comic book writers, at least. And there's actually some really good artists as well. Due to the accidental leak of a promotional ash can, we now know who the creative teams will be on the new line of comics, Dub Absolute Comics. The tagline for the new Absolute Comics project is also tying in with whatever the next phase is of the DC universe overall, as it notes, two distinct but inextricably link narratives building a dynamic and essential future for the world's greatest superheroes in october dc comics will publish dc all in special number one a new anthology comic book one shot which will kickstart the dc absolute universe i guess we should clarify that will officially kickstart the dc absolute universe because if you're reading absolute power which i'm not reading the mainline series you will see the introduction and the gateway of whatever mechanism DC Comics used to introduce these versions of the heroes to Earth, Zero, Earth Prime, whatever you want to call it in the DC Comics universe. They will become known in the Absolute Power event. How are they going to inextricably link the two narratives of Earth, Zero, and Absolute Universe, which will be like Universe 642, whatever you want to call it, because it's infinite universes out there? I don't know. I don't know why they're not going to treat this like Ultimate Universe from Marvel Comics. I think the way they're doing it quite frankly, is much smarter. If you want a smaller, more controlled line of connected comic books that don't have anything to do with the 616, you can go over to Ultimate Universe and enjoy a shared universe that's much smaller and more manageable. I don't understand why DC doesn't want to treat the absolute universe that way, but maybe they just have such an amazing kick-ass story that it's the only way they can do it. Now, will they just be aware of each other as things are happening kind of parallel with different iterations of the heroes. I'm not really sure, but it sounds like we should be expecting them to like meet up in events and stuff like that, which I think uh, will be an enormous turnoff because you're going to end up with fans of Absolute Universe and fans of, of Earth Prime, the incontinuity stuff, and they're not going to want to cross over. Of course, you are going to have people in the middle like both, but you're going to end up putting fans at odds with each other and basically not satisfying either of them. At least that's my cynical observation of the initial plans of the way it's been explained to me regarding absolute universe let's talk about the creators themselves the main writer associated with absolute comics has long been scott snyder and sure enough he will be writing absolute batman the other writers include names you are quite familiar with with jason aaron kelly thompson al ewing and jeff lemire all doing absolute comics titles dennis camp will be the only writer to be part of ultimate universe and absolute comics line other notable writers include Che Grayson and Pornsack Pichotti, also writing in Absolute Universe. We've long known that Scott Snyder was going to be the spearhead. Not only will he be the writer of Absolute Batman, he's also going to be like the architect. I don't know if he's going to be like the group editor, but he's going to be the guy that's making the creative decisions that are going to be driving the entire universe forward. I don't think he'll be making decisions for Wonder Woman and Superman and stuff like that but he will be making the major decisions on maybe when they meet up with the main inline continuity books and maybe when they meet up and do an absolute universe event or something like that. 
because this thing is quite frankly like too big <laughs> like i don't understand why they're coming out with like eight books right off the bat it's almost like a x-men redo all over again it's like why are you having so many books start small build it up get people invested in it and then you start adding on you don't just throw everything at the wall and hope it sticks there are some notable writers in there scott snyder on, on batman jason aaron on superman kelly thompson apparently on wonder woman Al Ewing and Jeff Lemire. I think we know what books they're going to be on, as well as Dennis Camp. Uh, when it comes to Che Grayson and Pornsock Pinchotti, not really sure. Che Grayson's a woman. Because she's a woman writer, she can only write female heroes, so I assume that she's going to be on Absolute Harley Quinn. Maybe Absolute Catwoman. Maybe that would be the other character that they would consider putting in here, but I imagine it's Absolute Harley Quinn. Pornsock Pinchotti, more of a horror-type writer. Perhaps he's doing like an absolute uh, Constantine would kind of make sense for him, or maybe even like an absolute Swamp Thing. But that's just pure speculation there. Dennis Camp in here is an enormous red flag, especially after reading Ultimates number two, which I'm going to do, do a review of on the channel tomorrow. Such a just a terrible comic book. You guys are not going to believe the shit that he put into that thing. While I did think he might have some talent after reading Bloodshot, a couple issues of that, I'm now confirmly convinced that he doesn't. <laughs> that he just comes to uh, comic books with an agenda. Che Grayson has never distinguished herself as talented. So I don't know that that's going to be a big thing. I like Porn Sack's name. A lot of people like his work that he's been doing as of late. So maybe there's some potential there. Love-hate relationship with Jason Aaron. When he's on, I think he's really good. But when he's off and he's doing Jason Aaron stuff, I think he's extremely destructive. Kelly Thompson. I, why didn't they just get G. Willow Wilson? She's such a better writer at this point. Like her Birds of Prey is awful. Somehow that's actually worked at worse than Scarlet. And I think Scarlet was really bad. Al Ewing, we'll see how that goes. Jeff Lemire, certainly a proven talent out there. So there's some good writers there. Now let's talk about the artists because we know who the artists are as well. The artist on Absolute Batman will be Nick Dragota. The other artists involved in the project include Wes Craig, co-creator of Deadly Class, Janoy Lindsay, Nick Robles, Rafa Sandoval, and Hayden Sherman, most of whom have extended experience in the DC Universe. The big names here, obviously, are Rafa Sandoval and Nick Dragota, at least to me. Those are the two artists I really like. If you go out and look at the stylings of the artists in there, even if you're not familiar with them, you will notice there's like one thing they have in common. They don't have like the same art style, but they certainly, at least from my eye and the way that I've experienced their art, they are certainly all kind of inspired by manga. I think they want them to have a distinct feel from regular incontinuity DC comics for the most part. Then they've kind of assembled a group of artists that will have something that kind of binds them together with a distinct look for Absolute Universe. I think that's really smart, actually. The main event, obviously, is going to be Absolute Batman. Scott Snyder, we've seen on Batman plenty. In fact, I would say this. Scott Snyder has said everything interesting he will probably ever say about Batman already at DC Comics. But Nick Dragota gets me very, very excited. Nick Dragota is an awesome artist. You know, he did um, East of West, that awesome series with Jonathan Hickman back in the day. And he's done some other projects that are really, really, really good. Maybe you're just a fan of the big two and you really haven't seen his stylings. He illustrated an anthology story in like Batman black and white or whatever. And that will give you a flavor of what Nick Dragota is. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to look good. And hopefully Scott Snyder has something interesting to do with the writing. And it'll really uh, highlight Nick Dragota and hopefully make him a bigger name out there. I love Rafa Sandoval. I can't imagine I want to see Rafa Sandoval on an absolute Green Lantern title at this point. I've seen enough Green Lantern books from Rafa or even um, kind of Flash, although he's certainly done less Flash work uh, over the years, and certainly he's already working on Superman now, so I'm not sure where he's going to end up. Maybe it is Flash. That's the one that kind of makes sense to me, but I'm definitely looking forward to that. Rafa Sandoval is a really, really good artist. The other artist, uh, you know, there, there's some talent in there, but, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Absolute Batman is going to be the main event, and it's going to be must-read because while I do think Scott Snyder has told enough Batman stories at this point, Nick Dragota on Batman is going to be awesome. And there is the chance that it's going to be good. Maybe taking these four years off or so or whatever Scott Snyder took off, 
really rejuvenated or, or reinvigorated his love and interest in DC Comics heroes, especially Batman. So hopefully uh, something cool comes out about that. But there's definitely a distinct style that they were looking for. At least it appears from my eye and just looking at the names and you see their art and everything of what they want absolute universe to kind of look like. Now, we do have some rumors out there regarding some of the projects these writers are working on. The latest bits of Absolute Gossip is that there are three other titles with upcoming line that will be Absolute Flash, Absolute Green Lantern, and Absolute Martian Manhunter. The writers are Jeff Lemire on Absolute Flash, Al Ewing on Absolute Green Lantern, and Dennis Camp on Absolute Martian Manhunter. Let's cover the good stuff first. Uh, Jeff Lemire is a fantastic writer. There's been some stuff that he's done in the past that bothers me, but I will read Absolute Flash by Jeff Lemire. And I'm hoping uh, maybe Rafa Sandoval will be the artist of that one. And that should be a really, really good book. Jeff Lemire is a premier talent. He doesn't like to just work specifically at one place. He doesn't just do DC stuff. Obviously, he's got his Black Hammer universe, Sweet Tooth. He's got a lot of other stuff and irons in the fire that he likes to work with. But him coming back to DC Comics is a really big deal. I understand Scott Snyder's a bigger name, and there's no doubting that, and that Scott Snyder has had more sales in the past at DC Comics than Jeff Lemire. But I think Jeff Lemire is a better writer right now, so I think that's a bigger deal. And we haven't had like a big mainline Flash title that's been popular really since Josh Williamson was on Flash and it was a perennial like top 20 seller. So that could be really good. Al Ewing, initially I was told he was going to be doing Wonder Woman and then it ended up being Kelly Thompson. But now we see he's going to be on Absolute Green Lantern. That is really the fit that makes the most sense for Al Ewing. If he was going to do a book, Wonder Woman didn't make a lot of sense, especially Wonder Woman like as an adventurer, as super-powered Indiana Jones with boobs. Or I guess he's, she's just super-powered um, Laura Croft, you know, still with boobs, <laughs> I guess at that point. That didn't make a lot of sense because that doesn't really fit into his writing sensibilities. Not that he couldn't do it, but it doesn't feel like something he would be really interested in. Absolute Green Lantern feels like something Al Ewing would be over the moon on. And I don't think Al Ewing is a superstar talent, but I do understand that he is a talent. And he can do like cosmic level stuff and he has good ideas. He might play them out a little bit too slow for my taste, but I do think this has a chance to be really, really good. And the good news is if you're a Green Lantern fan and this sucks, you still got the Jeremy Adams Green Lantern book to read. So it doesn't really... Uh, hurt you all that much, but hopefully we'll end up with two good Green Lantern books now that we've got Green Lantern War Journal, War Journal by Philip Kennedy Johnson kind of shutting down, and now we'll have this other absolute Green Lantern book by Al Ewing. But I do think that is a hand-in-glove type fit for Al Ewing, his sensibilities, and what he's actually good at, to where I thought Absolute Wonder Woman sounded really, really, really strange for Al Ewing. And then the final one, uh, Dennis Camp on Absolute Martian Manhunter, that is the book he should be on because Absolute Martian Manhunter will go nowhere. It'll have some fans because obviously there are fans of Martian Manhunter. There aren't enough fans of Martian Manhunter at this point to support an ongoing series. I'm not sure if they're going to announce this as a miniseries. They likely should to save themselves and Dennis Camp the embarrassment of having to cancel it after three or four issues or whatever. Not that it'll be canceled at three or four, but they'll announce it at that point and then they'll make it to six or eight or something like that. But this is definitely the right place for Dennis Camp, especially after reading Ultimates number two, which I will get to tomorrow. I'm going to do a full review about the absolute shit show that is Dennis Camp on Ultimates. It's absolutely atrocious. And I wouldn't touch this book after reading Ultimates number two with a 10 foot pole. They could put fucking Eddie Barrows on it. They could put Jorge Menez on it. They could put um, any of my favorite artists, like a Gleb Melnikov. <laughs> they could put any of my favorite artists on that book, and I wouldn't look at it because this dude, I think, is a foul writer, and I can smell the stink on him all the way here in the Philippines. That's the way I feel about Dennis Camp. After Ultimates number two, which you will have the enjoyment of me reviewing in full and explaining to you why I find that particular comic book so absolutely odious and really putting a spotlight on who Dennis Camp really is as a writer and why I would never, ever consider supporting him again. And he also did the 20th Century Men. If you read that one, you probably didn't want to read it to begin with. That's who that guy is. But Absolute Martian Manhunter, 
fits Dennis Camp and his ability. He's on the book that has no chance of succeeding, and I think that makes all the sense in the world. Obviously, we will have more information in less than two weeks because DC's San Diego Comic-Con uh, lineup is set up. I think on Friday is the Jim Lee and Friends panel, which appears to be like the code name for the Absolute Universe panel, where I imagine you're going to have Nick Dragota and Scott Snyder, Jason Aaron will be there. Probably, well, probably not Kelly Thompson, probably Che Grayson or something. One of the ladies will be there because you have to have a female or whatever. And they'll break it all down. Who's going to be on what, the release dates, what artists are going to be on what book. And it uh, should be exciting stuff. At least DC are trying something because they're not even treading water right now. They're just sinking at this point. And they've got to do something to improve their place in the industry. Because if they keep going at their current trajectory, Image Comics will pass them in 12 months as far as their market share and sales. I'm not even joking. It's that bad. But I do expect them to go from like 42 comic books a month right here and now to after October, maybe getting into like January when they've leveled out the entire line, not only of Absolute Universe, but all in and whatever initiative they're doing in the mainline continuity, that they'll likely be up much closer to 60 comic books in a month and they'll likely get some of that market share back. They certainly aren't passing Marvel anytime soon, but they need to do something to change their fortunes. And I do think this is going to do it. I think there's going to be interest in there. You've got big name writers, Scott Snyder, Jason Aaron, not my favorite. Al Ewing, not my favorite. Jeff Lemire, really, really talented. And you've got some really cool characters with good artists as well. Nick Dragota, Scott Snyder. Yes, I'll definitely be reading that one. If you'd like more coverage of DC Absolute Universe and everything going on, especially around the time of San Diego Comic-Con, we'll be covering it hot and heavy, not only here on YouTube, but certainly on Think Critical Patreon. You would like to support me over on Patreon. You get lots of awesome podcasts about that. There's a link in the video description. I hope to see you there very soon.